It occurs to me I've been going easy on you guys with my recent movie selections. But not today. You are too weak. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Marion Dora's gruesome true crime film, Cannibal. Released in 2006, Cannibal is Dora's cinematic feature debut. The director, who hides his real identity, was hired by filmmaker Uli Lommel to make a movie about the Armand Mivis case, a man who murdered and cannibalized a willing victim he met on the internet back in 2001. When Lommel saw the finished film, he flat out rejected it, claiming it was too gory. So Dora basically released it on his own a few months later, and the rest is splatter film history. With a gruesome backstory like that, you're probably wondering if Cannibal can door dash its way to a 5 barf bag rating. And you know what I always say. Let's get to the gore and find out. We fade in on this copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales, where Ilsa here is reading Hansel and Gretel to this little boy. Gretel, she shouted to the girl. Hurry up and fetch some water. Whether Hansel is fat or thin, tomorrow I am going to slaughter him and boil him. <laughs> I gotta say, I admire Marion Dora for getting straight to the point, I guess. This kid's gonna be a cannibal because his mother read him Hansel and Gretel. And then it's time for a montage through the credits, where we get to look at a bunch of autopsy texts and the like. Very subtle. And we've got anatomy photos and Dahmer books. All that's really missing is a copy of To Serve Man. Hmm, do you think these anatomy texts are basically cookbooks for cannibals? These are the kind of things that keep me awake at night. After the credits end, we jump down here to the Bowery, where German Uncle Fester is meeting up with this junkie. He's all like, feel my pecs, man. I think all this benching is really starting to pay off. I don't know. This feels sort of like when you go to a seafood place and pick your own lobster. Dude, are you even working your buys and tries? You need to do more curls. After some more inspection, he's like, nope, this cut of meat is definitely not USDA approved. I'm gonna have to pass. Our poor junkie is left crestfallen. Man, I'm not even good enough to be a hot lunch. Undaunted, Fester heads across town where he finds this kid. Maybe he's in the mood for veal. Hmm, <laughs> guess this kid was too stringy. Apparently, Fester, who's simply known as the man, is a picky eater. But hey, maybe he can order something to go on Grubhub. What? No one delivers human legs? Come on! I'm gonna be honest, it's hard to tell if he's trying to meet someone to eat or just looking for hookups on Grindr at this point. Hey, thanks for coming out. Sorry we couldn't make a connection. At least let me get you lunch. Oh, wait. I'll give Fester this, he's persistent. Can you believe that, Gunther? Dude wanted to eat me. Eventually, all this rejection does take a toll on him, though. Man, I'm so hungry. What I wouldn't give for a nice plate of scrambled legs. This lady doesn't realize it, but she just merrily escaped being devoured. He does eventually stop for a snack. Excuse me, waiter. Could you bring me another bowl of head? I, I mean bread. Bread! Meanwhile, back at his flat, a weary boy George checks his mail. Pass due. Pass due. Final notice. Come on, royalty check. And just when things look bleakest, there's hope in the form of a DM. This gets him pretty excited, so he starts boning up on his butchery skills by watching autopsy videos. And no, I can't show you that because they're real. At any rate, it looks like we've got a love connection. Or a dinner date. Or both. To get ready, he crafts this creepy doll. Guess there's a shortage of sex dolls in Germany. Dude probably should have just ordered a fleshlight. Then he calls it a night. Only one more sleep till my feast of flesh. The next day he's getting ready. It's about to be Sunday dinner. Better hire my best slacks and dress up for this. So, I'd like to point out that we are now 21 minutes into the movie. And aside from the Hansel and Gretel reading, there's been no spoken dialogue in this film. Mary and Dora is an artiste, guys. He ain't got time for no frivolous jibber-jabber. <laughs> Meanwhile, dinner's on the way. I 
I guess this guy was who the Proclaimers were talking about when they wrote, I would walk 500 miles. And at last, predator and prey meet. I'm your flesh. How romantic. And this guy is simply known as the flesh for the rest of the film. Fester's like, thank you for agreeing to attend my Donner party. I mean dinner. Dinner party. Dinner. Damn it, I'm not good at this. I don't want to suffer. They make some small talk on the way back to Fester's place. I can't wait. I've got everything ready. You will become a part of me. Well, at least three days anyway, then you're coming out the other end. They arrive back at his place, and man, Germans sure do have a weird way of decorating their Christmas trees. Inside, Fester's like, and here's where I'll be eating you later. I've put out my finest china for the occasion. So, what goes best with you anyway? I was thinking fava beans and a nice Chianti. And just in case you forgot that Marion Dora is an auteur, not just some exploitation hack, here's a shot filmed in tray perspective. Ooh la la. The Flesh isn't in the mood for tea though, he's already naked and raring to go. Man, I feel like there's gonna be a whole lot of dong in this movie. For his part, Fester's not sure what to make of this. Um, I wasn't expecting pigs in a blanket as an appetizer, but sure. After that, the makeout sesh commences. I feel like we needed some slow jam parodies here. TLC's Blue Plate Special or something, just to set the mood. And man, I wasn't kidding about all the dong in this movie. Just take my word for it, because I'm way too lazy to blur all that shit out. Then we get this weird romance montage, complete with bizarre piano score. And here I thought German porn was weird. Also, is this a good idea? I don't bring my cow home and take it out on a date before I cook my steaks. Just saying. Then they adjourn to the killing room where Fester already has a camera set up. I'm gonna call this one two pasty Germans, one filleting knife. It's gonna be huge on best gore. Eat your heart out, Luca Magnata. Or better yet, let me. Look, I know I've given Mary and Dora some crap in this video, but jokes aside, the dude definitely has an aesthetic. I'm not sure what I'd call this, but there's definitely more than just an exploitation movie happening here. If you thought we were going to get down to business, you're wrong. First, we're going to do this shadow puppet show. They are nice shadows. They look like creatures, like fashioned from flesh. I'll be honest, kind of looks like they're about to open the lament configuration and summon Pinhead. You have nothing to worry about. And after some more sex, the flesh has some demands. Bite it. And the man goes to town on that thing like it's a bratwurst. Which makes me wonder why the Johnsonville Brats people didn't want to sponsor this video. And no, I can't show you that. Apparently this is a grisly brat, and the flesh isn't pleased at the failure. You are too weak. Look, this is no time for cannibal shaming. It's his first time. His eyes were bigger than his stomach. Don't worry though, the flesh is all about second chances. Perhaps it would be better for you if I were asleep. He might have a point. I mean, most people don't want their dinner looking at them while they devour it. After Fester roofies the flesh, the new plan is set in motion. But Fester fails again. Take me back to the station, please. Dude just might not be cut out for this whole being a cannibal thing. Then they drive back to town. Look, I've never had that happen before. It's okay, honey. It happens to all men at some point. Most awkward ride ever. Then, at the train station, this happens. You know where the toilets are? I, I will show you the way. No, I prefer to wait here. I need a few minutes by myself. Look, we had all that bratwurst earlier. It's not gonna be pretty in there, and I'd rather you not see it. The Flesh really has his heart set on being a hot lunch, though, and offers Fester one more chance. I need you to be tough. <laughs> you mean like your penis? Back at the house, they prepare for try three. I hereby give my consent for Fester to castrate me and eat my kielbasa. After popping more pills, Fester gets the party started and turns the flesh into John Wayne Bobbitt. Castrate me. Do you kids even remember John Wayne Bobbitt? Christ, I'm old. 
And once again, you're going to have to take my word for that because YouTube will ship bricks if I show you a penis amputation in this video. Just trust me when I tell you I don't think the flesh was prepared for this. And those pills don't seem to have worked. <laughs> but as bad as that is, it's still not as terrible as watching them whiz out of the stump. <laughs> I wish I were making that up. I gotta figure this is where Uli Lommel told Mary and Dora, dude, I can't release this thing, it's disgusting. Of people puking in the theater. And we then transition to the next morning. Who's ready for sausage? <laughs> the flesh is still alive and is all like, man, I smell delicious. But I taste even better. <laughs> Unfortunately, Fester doesn't seem to care for it as much. With everyone's bellies full, it's bath time as Fester lets the flesh bleed out in the tub. Now that he's dead, Fester drags him out of the tub to prepare the carcass. Oh, this is what they mean when they talk about dead weight. And of course, Mary and Dora's never one to shy away from reality, so this corpse performs pretty much all the bodily functions of cadavers. So yeah, the bowels go. After an arduous Batan death march to the barn, Fester gets ready to work. Except the flesh hasn't quite shuffled off this mortal coil yet. No worries though, Fester finishes the job. Making me carry you out here. You're a real pain in the neck. Now that he's finally dead, it's time to drain him. Dude's just up here hanging around. The interesting thing about this scene is that it feels more visceral than it is. Dora films everything in these close-ups where you can't really tell what anything is exactly, but you know it's gross. It's surprisingly restrained for a film that's so infamous. Eventually, the flesh does spill his guts though. Nothing too subtle about that, or anything that's about to happen next. Ooh, I'm gonna pair you with a nice white wine. And maybe I'll wear your guts as garters. At any rate, the dude's really getting into the job. I'm basically waiting for him to pull a Tom Green and Freddy got fingered and crawl inside the carcass. And the cutting continues. Here at Publix, we choose only the finest cuts of meat because your family deserves the best. So, I'm having to be really judicious with the visuals on this one, but trust me, there's a lot happening here I can't show you. And a few minutes later, the flesh is decapitated. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. After that, there's even more cutting. I was gonna make a joke about the butcher knife, but it wasn't very cleaver. I hope he's careful while sawing away at this meat. I'd hate for him to make any mistakes. The next morning, Fester heads out to bury the remains. You could say this plot is getting deep. And now, I'd like to say a few words about my departed friend, the Flesh. You were a strong and delicious man, but in the end, you turned out to be spineless. And back at the house, he's cooking this all up like he's Anthony Wong in The Untold Story. Better get these ribs on the smoker stat. And at last, dinner is served. The Flesh is the best kind of dinner guest because he's quiet and he doesn't eat much. But it is hard to get him to pass the peas. Best Thanksgiving ever. After that, he's back out in the world. Is he satisfied or does he need more meat? Hell if I know. So, Cannibal was basically the film that started Mary and Dora's cinematic reign of terror, which is ongoing. Trust me, we'll be getting to more Dora in the not too distant future. As a debut film, it's pretty much indicative of the Dora aesthetic. The guy makes artsy gore films that vacillate between offensive, repulsive, and, well, boring. You wait through a lot of slow parts to get to the gore in Cannibal, but like all of the director's work, the wait is pretty much worth it. But the real question is, can Cannibal serve up five barf bags of body parts? Let's go to the gore card!
In terms of gross anatomy, Cannibal delivers. There's a ton of splatter in this movie that there's absolutely no way I can show you, but believe me, it's there. We're treated to full-on dismemberment, a decapitation, some real autopsy and slaughterhouse footage, a fair amount of defecation, and that absolutely brutal castration sequence. The effects work is quite good, and because of that, Cannibal gets a 5 barf bag rating. This is definitely a sick flick, and not really for the casual gore hound. Want to see another extreme horror entry? Then check out my review of Atroz. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.